guys and welcome to today's video. So, as you can tell by the title, it's kind of clickbait but it's not clickbait because I'm going to be telling you my high school experience and that's going to go all the way from year 7 to year 11 finishing high school. As you guys know, I've done quite a few story times on my channel about my high school and I've got a lot of comments saying, you're a liar, you made all this up and I'm just here to kind of clarify my whole high school experience. And if you're interested in that, then be sure to stick around. If you're not, then see you in my next video. <laughs> so, throughout school, I've always been a good student, believe it or not. Um, I've never had any detentions. I've not had one detention my entire life. Um, yeah, I haven't had one detention. So that kind of sums up what I was like in school. I've never had a detention. Bad students get detentions. So, year seven, I was really, really excited to start high school. I took exams for like the top schools in Wolverhampton. There's a few schools in Wolverhampton that you have to take like little tests for to go to. I passed all the tests for those. But last minute I decided like, this, I don't wanna go to like this school or that school. I wanna go to like a normal school. I feel like I'll fit in better there. And that's what I decided to do. So I went to this school and on the first day I was so excited, I remember it all, I had a great time, I had like a really awesome day, I was so excited to be there, I didn't have any friends really, I had like two friends probably, no one from my primary school went to the same high school as me so I was completely alone when I first started high school, I had to start from scratch, which I actually really appreciate now looking back because I feel like I would have had a more rocky start if I'd had friends to kind of cling on to because I know a lot of people did have friends to cling on to and that gave them a more rough start because they already had that base of people. So in some ways it benefited them and in some ways it kind of held them back from making friends. I didn't have that problem so I was really lucky in that way. So year seven went really well. I got like an A star in year seven which is pretty much impossible in history. Um, yeah. I did really well in all my classes. I've always been in the highest set you can possibly be in throughout the whole of high school. Um, I'm not like an underachiever. If I wanted to get all A stars for GCSE, I would have been able to do that. But I didn't want to put the work in and I wanted to spend my time on other things, honestly. So, year seven, great year. Um, it was kind of like a rough start. Um, on my induction day, I was put in all of the lowest sets because I guess I hadn't got like my SAT reports. SATs are like SATs. Um, they're like tests that you do at the end of year six, which is the last year of primary school. You do these little tests and that kind of tells your high school which like, like what you're capable of pretty much. So I did those SATs. I got the highest mark you can possibly get, which is a 6A. I got a little plaque for the highest achievement in Wolverhampton for English. I got like, the best apparently, I don't know. I got a little reward for it. And year seven went really well. Yeah, top sets for everything, full marks in all my classes. <laughs> was going really well. So then I got to year eight. Um, I started having quite a few problems in school. There was a certain boy that was kind of bullying me and harassing me and just like, it was like an ongoing thing and I felt extremely threatened by him. Um, my mom wrote multiple complaints to the school about him and nothing was done and I felt very threatened and vulnerable while I was in school. I didn't feel comfortable being there. I felt very aware, like self-aware and very, I don't really know how to explain it, just like scared and uncomfortable in school and I think that, I, th I think that, I think that is where this whole triggering point is for me during high school because as you guys know, I didn't enjoy high school and towards the end of it I'd literally just given up, like I couldn't I couldn't deal with it anymore, I was just completely done and I just wanted to leave and I think this is where the triggering point is. So year 8, I think I was in a relationship with this at this point, I'm not too sure, I was in a relationship for like, was it two years, two and a half years, I'm not sure, so for a long period in high school, like half of high school, I was in a relationship. Um, and while I was in this relationship, I had another boy harassing me, kind of bullying me. And this is when the sexual assault thing happened and it involved that boy. Um, basically, this thing happened 
and I reported it to the school. They said they'd take my statement and sort it out. Nothing happened. Uh, my mum called the school again. They said that this boy would be removed from my set. He wasn't. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I already felt very unsafe around this boy. And then, you know, I'm sexually assaulted by this boy and nothing happens. My school doesn't take it seriously. And yeah. And there are reasons why this sexual assault was very triggering for me that I'm not going to go into right now because I don't feel fully comfortable talking about that right now. But there are reasons why it was so upsetting for me that I don't have to disclose to you watching this. Then throughout year 8 things just kind of started getting worse. I was still in top sets achieving top grades that you could possibly get. Um, I've always been one of the best in my class up until probably year 9 and that's when I was just like peace out done end of year 9 that was when I was fully like no no. So up until year 9 we had these really good head of houses which was like our year manager. So in year 9, I think it was year 9, mine left and um, he was, a lot of people didn't like him but I really, I really liked him, I didn't have a problem with him. A lot of people have issues with teachers that have authority and are more strict. I don't have that problem, I believe that you're in school. You're in there to learn. I was never one of those people, don't get me wrong, I was never one of those people that fucked about in class and fucked around with other people's education. I really don't believe in that. If I am sitting next to someone who wants to learn, I will not sit there the whole class talking to them. I think that is so disrespectful and so rude. And it's kind of like taking their education away from them. Sorry if everything's moved, my battery died and I had to charge it up. So as I was saying, I think it's so disrespectful to kind of interrupt someone's education. I'd never do that and that's a piece of advice to you. If you can see that the person next to you is really trying to listen and you keep trying to tap them on the shoulder and interrupt them, like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Please don't do it. Um, also, if you're the type of person that's like the class clown, um, I was pretty funny. I, I might have been voted funniest if we had that. I was pretty funny. People used to laugh at what I said. but. If you're like the class clown that's really like, you know, loud, know when to stop. Like, there's a point where everyone gets sick of your jokes and they are just trying to listen to what's going on and you're just kind of holding the whole class up like, please know when to stop if you're that person because it's just like taking someone's education away from them and I would never do that. A lot of you guys think that I don't really care about education, I think all of it's really unimportant. That's not true. I love learning, I think education is so important. I'm always going to be in some form of education. I've mentioned this before. I feel like learning is just making yourself grow and I always want to learn and carry on growing. I've decided that I am gonna go to college to do photography. When I finish that course, I'm going to be doing Italian and I just wanna keep learning and growing and changing. But I don't think that school is necessarily the way to learn. I think the best way to learn is to travel and see how different people live and see what it's kind of like around the world. And I think that, I think that, <laughs> I think that's like a really key part of life and a key part of becoming who you are. If you're really struggling with your identity, I recommend travel. Even if it means you buy like a five pound train ticket and go to the next city across, you might find, why can't I speak today? You might find, you might find that things are a little bit different there. Travelling, I think it's the best way to learn, honestly. So, that was pretty much year 9. One of my all-time favourite teachers left who literally helped me through the darkest point in my life. I feel like I should mention this. I have always struggled with depression and anxiety very severely. I have tried to kill myself multiple times. Um, I don't want to go into it, but I have been at very, very low points. I am... I'm very proud of myself for even being alive right now, never mind finishing high school or anything like that. I am just so proud of myself for having like the willpower to just carry on with life. Because I have been at such low points in my life that I am actually amazed that I'm here right now. Like going from being this sad, just, I don't know how to describe it, it just makes me want to curl up into a ball when I think about it. I've gone from being at the lowest of lows to building myself and building myself up and building myself up to being here. And I am so proud of myself for that. And that's what a lot of people don't know. Like, 
my high school experience wasn't just oh getting up going to school it was dragging myself out of bed every single day when I would literally rather be dead like the amount of times I have gone to school and school was one of the things that really made me feel lower and just I don't know like it just made me feel a hundred times worse than I already did because I was being controlled I I couldn't leave a class if I felt like I was about to have a panic attack like I I wasn't allowed that like I really wasn't and I just like uh, yeah high school just made things so much worse for me mentally and that is one of the reasons why I didn't want to carry on with education and why I feel like university isn't for me because I can't be in that environment it's no good for my mental health and I will always put my mental health first no matter what I've been at a point where I was putting my mental health second and that just pushed me into a lower point in life so kind of going on a tangent but I felt like that needed to be addressed um yeah as I was saying my favorite teacher left she helped me through the lowest points in my life. She gave me a little book that I still have. It's either on my windowsill in here or on my windowsill in there. I'll never get rid of it. Um, yeah, and that all of that had happened. And literally there were times where I'd be on my way to school and I wouldn't look when I crossed the road. I'd be like, please, can a car hit me and this will just all be over. Because I used to live on a main road and I used to cross the road to get the bus and I used to walk across that road and just cross my fingers that it would just end right there like I just look straight ahead hope that a car was coming and I'd just be gone and that is that was my mentality for the majority of high school and I felt like that needed addressing and that is one of the reasons why I achieved less than I should have to me it's a brilliant achievement I achieved what I needed to go to college and I'm really happy with my results and you guys know I don't think GCSEs are the be all and end all in life. I don't think they're as important as everybody says they are. They will make things easier in life, but overall, you don't you don't need them. Don't worry if you got really bad grades, you don't need them. So that was that. Year nine. That was just kind of like the tipping point. I was year eight was the tipping point. Year nine was like last straw, I've had it. So, start of year 10. Year 10, I think, was when we had all the problems. So, start of year 10, um, we had this new system and things had kind of changed. I came back after the summer of year 9, came back into year 10 and everything was different and I was just like, whoa, I felt like I was in prison. In my high school, I don't know if it's the same everywhere, but in my high school, you go in at 9 o'clock and you leave at 3.30 and you're not allowed out of the building until that bell goes at 3.30. It's like being in prison, it really is. You can't wear your coat on inside, you can't drink anything but water, you can't eat anywhere but the cafeteria. You guys know me, I don't drink water, and I also suffered with severe migraines and stuff like that, and when I have a migraine, if I don't drink, it makes it worse because I get dehydrated, and I wasn't allowed to drink. My mum wrote notes saying she doesn't drink water, if you do not let her drink, she will pass out and that will be your fault. They completely ignored it. Um, I had multiple times where I felt like I was gonna faint or felt very sick and ill because I wasn't hydrated. I couldn't drink from 9 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, uh, just drink water. Like, I, 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 I can't. <laughs> like, it makes me sick. I will literally throw up if you make me drink water. Don't know why, don't ask me. That's just how it was. So. That was that. There were all these new rules and I was just, I felt like I was in prison and I honestly couldn't stand it anymore. I just wanted to get out and leave. And then, what was the first thing? I can't remember what the first video I made was about that they made me delete. I think it was just like the standards of the high school. I just, I had a really bad day at school and I was just like ready to blow. Like all this shit had happened. They weren't listening to me. They weren't taking anything on board that I was saying. And I was just ready to blow. Then I made that video where I was talking about my school. I didn't mention the school's name. Then I got called into that meeting and my school threatened to sue me. If you want to hear about that, I'll link it in the description. So they were threatening to sue me and I just felt attacked. I felt so uncomfortable. During this point, the boy that used to harass me and bully me was threatening to blow up my house. He was threatening to put fireworks 
through my letterbox when my two year old brother was living. Um, he was threatening to literally kill me. I had to go to school at a different time, leave school at a different time because my safety was in danger because of these threats. And that kind of shows you the type of people that went to my school. Just saying. So all this had happened and I was just like, I don't even know what was going on. Like, I was just like, I, year 10, that's when it just blew up and I just couldn't believe it. My grades went from literally being like all A's to like pretty much all C's and then like just lower and lower which I wasn't too bothered about because honestly I was suffering with like serious mental health issues. I just couldn't deal with life and then had the extra stress of school and it was just like this was my brain it was just like school just bust stress you should blah 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 like all this stuff was just in my brain and I couldn't deal with it like my brain was about to just go like I can't deal with stress. I was on medication because of the stress that I was under because of school. I was put under so much pressure that my brain was too stressed out to handle things and my brain shuts down when I'm too stressed. It really does. I can't let myself get too stressed because my brain will turn off. Like, I'm, I'm not joking when I say that. I don't know why, I don't know how to control it, but if I get too stressed, my brain just turns into like soup like I can't think straight like I can't function I can't get out of bed like I get so fucked up and I have a rash on my leg because I get like anxiety rash I didn't know what it was until the other day until someone did hold until someone told me but I get anxiety rash which is really annoying so I'm trying not to scratch but yeah that was year 10 everything blew up I went from having really amazing grades to really low grades and honestly that was like the least of my concern like my main concern was trying to get myself sane again and just thinking straight that was my number one priority so year 11 rolls around I'm like okay I at the start of year 11 you kind of look into colleges and stuff like that and you have to apply to the colleges by December I'm pretty sure so I had gone from having all A's to these really really low grades and then in year 11, I went to the interview to the college that I want to go to because I wanted to do level three um, photography, which is a diploma in photography, which is really, really good. And it's the highest course you can go on. And I really wanted to do that. So I wanted to see the requirements, what you needed. And they basically told me you need four HCs, including English, maths and art. And I was like, okay, sorted. So. They were telling me about this course, they were telling me how you go to Italy for two weeks and work for Vogue and I was just so excited, I was like, oh my god, this sounds amazing, I can't wait. And that really motivated me and pushed me to work for the grades that I got. Um, yeah, as I said in my GCSE results video, I went from a G in maths, a G grade in maths, to a C in two months. And I think that just kind of proves how intelligent I am. If I can go to a G, if I can go from a G to a C in two months, that's pretty amazing. Like, not many people did because I was in a set, I was put into a set where they basically said, we don't think you're going to pass and that's that. And not many people in that set passed maths. I was one of the few in that set that passed maths because you had two months to go from like, some people were on a U, some people were like on an F. I was on a G, which is like the lowest grade before a U, and I managed to get a C, and I think that's kind of, I don't need to prove my intelligence, but I just proved my intelligence. So all that was going on, and I managed to get all my grades back up to the entry requirements, and I passed six of the nine GCSEs. So I passed six of the nine GCSEs that I took, which I was so happy with, I only needed four. So yeah, I was really happy with that. And my overall high school experience wasn't a very good one. And that's pretty much my high school experience, I guess. I do want to talk about some other things pretty quickly before I end this video. So let me just do that. Um, some things that I want to mention. I, if you're a teacher from my school watching this, I deeply apologize if I have upset you or insulted you in any way, shape or form. Um, I think education is great. I really do. I am so blessed to have had free education in England. Um, I'm so happy that I had that. I don't dislike all of these teachers. Like, 
I don't dislike you. I like every teacher in that school apart from two. Two teachers in that school that I strongly dislike and that is my old form tutor who told me I was pathetic for having a panic attack and wouldn't let me leave the room while I was having a panic attack in front of my entire class. She wouldn't let me leave and I was having a really bad panic attack. She told me I was pathetic and that I couldn't leave. And also the leader of the school who wouldn't let me go home when I was feeling extremely mentally unstable and told me that I would be physically restrained if I tried to leave the school, which is in fact a lie. Could I sue you for slander being as though you said that? Because it's false information that you told a student. You told a student that you could manhandle them to keep them in school. <laughs> okay, then. And they are the two people that I dislike. Everybody else, thank you so much for teaching me. Honestly, I enjoyed the majority of my classes. I really did. I love my art class. I love my English class. I love my history class. Like, I really did. And I just want to say thank you to <clears throat> a lot of the teachers that I had. You know if I liked you, I think you know this, but I just want to say thank you because you were great teachers, you did a great job, and yeah, thanks. Thank you to my maths teacher as well because honestly I wouldn't have passed math without you. So yeah, disclaimer, I don't dislike every teacher. I love a lot of my teachers, like, they were great. So disclaimer. Also, I think education is important, don't get me wrong. I've already said this, education is very important. Don't think that I'm giving you the message to drop out of school and just stop going to high school, but I do think that high school needs to focus, or just schools in general, need to focus on more real life things. I recently moved house. I had no idea about council tax. I didn't know how to apply for a house. I didn't know like how to get electric. I didn't know how to get my internet. Like there are a lot of things that you're not taught. Like I have no idea what to do if my car tire pops. I don't know how to change a tire. That's like something that you need to know in life. And I don't know how to do that. There are a lot of bare necessities in life that I've never been taught and I don't know how to do them. So I feel like some schools need to focus on that a little bit more. Maybe all schools. Also, I think you need to take into consideration that a lot of younger people, shh, please. A lot of younger people in the high school age do you suffer with some type of anxiety or they're just stressed? High school is so stressful. I don't think you realize the amount of stress that is put on high school students. It is so ridiculous. Like I felt like I was having a meltdown for the entirety of high school and I just, I didn't know how to help that. And I feel like if you gave classes on how to reduce stress or what to do if you're in this mental state. When I was trying to end my life, I, I didn't know that there were helplines that you could call. I was never taught that and that's pretty fucking valid information that I need to know. Like, I don't know CPR. The only reason I know CPR is because I've seen it on movies. Like, you should teach things that people need to know. Like, there are so many useless things that you teach but I don't know the bare necessities of life. And I just wish that school was more life orientated and it kind of taught you how to live. Because I just learned that pi is like 3.14 and to find like the radius of a circle you do like pi r squared like please I just I want you to focus on things that people can actually use and I'm sure I'm not going to make a difference to anything but you know it's worth saying something but moral of the story um I wanted to cover things up because a lot of people were saying you're a liar blah 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 you lied about your whole high school experience blah 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 I'm not a liar like, this is what it was, this is how it was, it wasn't all bad, so I guess you can say I'm giving you like a false idea of what my high school was like, like, but I'm sure no one wants to hear a story time about the time I got an A star in history when I was in year 7, like nobody cares about that. So that is my video for today, it was very like unplanned and just random in my head but I really wanted to get all of this stuff out of my head and into a video. And this video was also requested. So that was my high school experience. This is my advice for high school. And 